Hello and welcome to EA. Oh, f it's not EA, is it? Hello and welcome to Lionhead. No, f you're not Lionhead. F you. Hello and welcome to Introversion. Come on in. Darwin is kind of like a, a utopian world inside the computer. You control little tiny green stick men, um, discovered by Dr. Sepulveda as a kind of artificial intelligence experiment. And it's, um, it's a kind of strategy game. You, you kind of populate the world, move around, you know, create new items, engineers and so forth, and take them forth. Like I say, it's utopian, so nothing really bad happens. Darwinia was released back in 2004 and won the IGF award, the Stainless Manali award. And around that time, Microsoft approached them to produce it for Xbox Live Arcade. Now, the original intention was just to do a, a straight port of Darwinia. Um, but in Microsoft, their usual kind of way, they said, can you give us multiplayer? And so we had to kind of squeeze in multiplayer into Darwinia, which didn't work. And what happened was we were creating multi-winner instead, which turned out to be a separate game. We in turn then approached Microsoft and said, well, we've actually got two games now instead of one. Can we release them as two? So they said, uh, no, you're doing it as one. So what we ended up with is actually two games in one package. Multi-winner, on the other hand, is, um, is, is really a collection of small games. Each player starts with a home flag. It is well protected by gun turrets. Your aim is to capture your opponent's flag whilst protecting your own. To do this, capture all the flags that link your home flag to your opponent's flag. Capture your opponent's home flag to win the game. Each team is building a giant rocket. It's a race to see who can launch first. First, you must capture solar panels to power your fuel pumps and refuel your rocket. You might have to fight for them. Next, load your rocket with 100 multi-winian astronauts. A 10 second launch countdown will begin. During your launch countdown, enemy saboteurs will attempt to destroy your rocket. The first player to safely launch their rocket wins. My favourite one, though, is um, Capture the Statue. The statue is very heavy and it moves very slowly. Be careful not to drop it. Look out for attacking armies who want to steal the statue from you. Carry the statue safely back to your home base to score a point. We haven't really been told what the final price is or, or even when the actual release date as well as Microsoft is concerned. We've got the, our internal release date, which is September. That's when we want to complete the game internally. I'm responsible for uh, coming up with our new video games and doing the primary technical work and architecture um, and then seeing them through to finished games. And uh, the games that I've made so far, uh, the Uplink was my first introversion game, which I made when I was at university. You're an Uplink agent, a freelance hacker. Your clients, global multinationals. You hack into rival computer systems, steal research data, sabotage other companies, launder money, raise the evidence, even frame innocent people, and all from the comfort of your own home. In Uplink, you are the hacker elite. Uh, then we had Darwinia and Defcon and Multiwinia. And uh, I'm now working on our fifth game project, which is called Subversion. Uh, it's the longest running project that I've ever done. It's been running since 2002. And um, it was actually meant to be our second video game immediately after Uplink. Um, but it's just been kind of delayed and delayed. And every, every time we come to work on it, uh, the, the other games that we're working on just naturally uh, get ahead. And then, um, but now finally we're actually focusing on it and we're going to finish it. We've learned a lot of lessons about um, content in video games and it takes us a very long time to make any content ever. So like Darwinian for example, we spent three years and it only had nine levels, you know. And so we've been trying to use a lot of procedural content generation, um, which basically means that we, uh, we generate the world that the game takes place in from nothing. We start with a completely blank canvas and we write rules for how to generate the world and we just run those rules over a long period of time to create a whole game world which is very rich 
but we've never actually manually edited or made. And everybody's game world will be different. And so um, we're kind of, it's set in like modern, a modern city, so we can generate um, a 10 kilometer area of city within just a couple of minutes with skyscrapers and rivers and houses and everything. And then any one of those buildings, you could click on that building and go into that building and then more detail will appear, the floors will appear and elevators will appear and, um, and then eventually people and, and systems that run the building and so on. And so what we're trying to do is trying to make a very large game area um, with an awful lot of depth as well in any of the areas that you go to, but none of it's been handmade. And then we use that to, to fill up our world with content. You know, obviously if you handcraft everything, there's a very limited area that your players can go through and then they, they hit the edge of your game world and they can't go any further. So you could imagine a scenario where you've got you know, like a 30 story skyscraper, you know, and we might, we might do the 28th and 29th floors completely by hand and script everything and write all the dialogue and lay everything out hand by hand. And then at that point we've set up constraints. We've said there's, a, there's an elevator shaft here, for example, or there's a staircase here, and these are the window types that we've used. And then you run the procedural generation on all the other floors of the building, and it just fills in the building with all the details, you know, really quickly, just like that. And then you don't need to, you haven't had to use your time to uh, produce content to the same quality level as those two floors. If we did everything in subversion that we could possibly do, um, it wouldn't come out until 2030 and uh, <laughs> it would be uh, bankrupt about 100 times over by the time we finished it um, because it's such, a, it's such an expansive idea I and mean, you could do anything in it in this, in this game world um, and so we're quite careful I think to pick the targets that we want to go for and pick the things we want to aim for and do them really well um, but in terms of expanding the game world after launch I'd love to do that.